today we are going to be covering Hecate, I'm sorry, Hecate, the uh, Greek god of witchcraft, is one of her more common known roles. Um, this video was suggested by Crystal Marie. I'll leave the, uh, the uh, comment somewhere here on the screen. So if you uh, would like to see any gods covered in this series, leave a comment down below and you might just see your choice next. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. Hecate is a goddess in ancient Greek religion and mythology, most often shown holding a pair of torches or a key, and in later periods was depicted in three and triple form. So there was uh, three women that made up the singular symbol of Hecate. She is associated with crossroads, entranceways, the night, light, magic, witchcraft, knowledge of herbs and poisonous plants, ghosts, necromancy, and sorcery. Her earliest appearance in literature was in Hesiod's Theogony in the 8th century as a goddess goddess of great honor with domains in all three, the sky, the earth, and the sea. Hence her depiction of her triple form. Her place of origin is debated by scholars, but she had popular followings amongst the witches of Thessaly, an important sanctuary among the Carians of Asia in Lagina. Hecate was one of several deities worshipped in ancient Athens as a protector of the household, alongside with Zeus, Hestia, Hermes, and Apollo. All five shared this role. In the prost Christian writings of the Chaldean oracles, she was also regarded with some limited rulership of the earth, sea, and sky, as well as a more universal role to the savior, the mother of angels, and the cosmic world soul. Regarding the nature of her worshippers, it is said that she is more at home on the fringes of history rather than in the center of the Greek pantheon. She is intrinsically ambivalent and polymorphous. She straddles the conventional boundaries and eludes true definition. Whether or not Hecate's worship originated in Greece, some scholars have suggested that the name derives from a Greek root and several potential sources have been identified potential source words have been identified. However, no sources suggested will or willingness as a major attribute of Hecate, which makes this very unlikely that well, it's a crazy word that I'm going to put on the screen. Means willing. Some scholars believe that this word could be attached to Hecate's name, but was later found to be very unlikely. Another possible Greek word that is suggested as the origin for the name of Hataki of Hecate is this crazy word, also known as Hecatos an obscure underling of Apollo, interpreted as the far-reaching one or the far-darter. This has been suggested in comparison with the attributes of the goddess Artemis, strongly associated, who is strongly associated with Apollo and frequently equated with Hecate in the classical world of Greek, of 
of the Greek pantheon. Supporters of this etymology suggest that Hecate was originally considered an aspect of Artemis prior to the latter's adoption in the Olympian pantheon. Artemis would have, at that point, become more strongly associated with purity and maidenhood. On the other hand, while her originally macabre attributes, like her association with magic, the souls of the dead and the night would have been continued to be worshipped separately under a new title, Hecate. Though often considered the most likely Greek origin of the name, this theory does not account for her worship in Asia, where her association with Artemis seems to have been a very late development, if at all, and the competing theories that the attribution of darker aspects and of magic to Hecate were themselves not originally part of her worship. Hecate was generally represented as a three-formed or triple-bodied statue, though the earliest known images of the goddess are her as a singular entity. Her earliest known representation is a small terracotta statue found in Athens. An inscription on the statue is a dedication to Hecate in the writing of the style oh in writing of the style of the sixth century, but otherwise lacks any of the symbols typically associated with the goddess. She she is seated on a throne with a chaplet around her feet, and the depiction is otherwise relatively generic. A sixth century fragment of pottery depicts a goddess who may be Hecate in a maternal or fertility mode, crowned with leafy branches as in later descriptions. She is depicted offering a maternal blessing to two maidens who embrace her. The figure is flanked by lions, an animal associated with Hecate both in the Chaldean oracles and in art from Asia. The, it was around the second century where travel writer Posenius stated that Hecate was first depicted in the triplicate by the sculptor Alcamenas in the Greek classical period of the late 5th century, whose sculpture was placed before the temple of the wingless Nike in Athens. Though Alcamenas' original statue is lost, hundreds of copies exist, and the general motif of a triple Hecate situated around a central pole or column, better known as a hecatation, was used both as crossroad shrines as well as the entrance to temples and to private homes. These typically depict her holding a variety of items, including torches, keys, serpents, and daggers. Some of the agitation include a sculpture from Attica in the 3rd century, which includes additional dancing figures identified as the Shrites, circling the triple Hecate and her central column. It is possible that the representation of a triple Hecate surrounding a central pillar was originally derived from poles set up at three 
two-way crossroads with masks hung on them facing in each direction. In the first century, Avid wrote, Look at Hecate, standing guard among the crossroads, one face in each direction. And if you may remember, uh, one of the things that, that she was sort of a goddess or protector of was of crossroads and decisions. Hecate was associated with borders, city walls, doorways, crossroads, and by extension, realms outside and beyond the world of the living. She appears to have been particularly associated with being between life and death, and hence is frequently characterized as a liminal goddess. Hecate mediated between regimes, both Olympian and Titan, both living and dead, but also between the mortal and the divine. This liminal role is reflected in a number of her cult titles, Apertopia, Endonia, Propylia, Triodia, which in order is those that turn away or protects on the way before the gate, and he or she who frequents crossroads. One of her many other duties was as a goddess. She was expected to avert harmful or destructive spirits from house or city over which she stood guard and to protect any individual as she or he passed through dangerous liminal places. Hecate would naturally become known as a goddess who could also refuse to avert demons or even drive them on against unfortunate individuals. It was probably her role as a guardian of entrances that led to Hecate's identification by the mid-5th century as a Thessalonian, Thessalian goddess. One of her other odd names, Indonias, which again is translates into on the way. Her very name, on the way, suggests that she watched over all entrances, entrances, for it expresses both, both the possibility that she stood on the main road into a city, keeping eyes on all who entered, and in the road in front of private houses, protecting their inhabitants. This function would appear to have a good relationship with the iconographic association of Hecate and her keys and torches, and it might also relate to her appearance with said two torches, which were positioned on either side of a gate or door to illuminate the immediate area and allow visitors to be identified. <laughs> in Byzantium, small temples that were built in her honor were always placed close to the gate of the city. Hecate's importance was above all as a deity of protection. When Philip of Macedon was about to attack the city. According to the legend, she alerted the townspeople with her ever-present torches and with her pack of dogs, which were also seen to be sacred, which served as her constant companions. 
This suggests that Hecate's close association with dogs is derived in part from the use of watchdogs, who particularly at night would raise alarm when intruders approached. Watchdogs were extensively used by the Greeks and Romans. Thanks to her association with boundaries and the liminal spaces between worlds, Hecate is also recognized as a goddess of the underworld. As the holder of keys that can unlock any gate, any door, or any realm, she can unlock the gates between realms and even unlock the gates of death. As described in a third century poem by Theocritus, he described the entrance to hell as Hecate's grove, though he says that Hecate is equally powerful in both heaven and in hell. The Greek papyri described Hecate as the holder of keys to Tartarus. Like Hermes, Hecate takes on the role of guardian, not just of roads, but of all journeys, including the long, long, dark journey to the afterlife. In both art and in myth, she is known, along with Hermes, and Thanatos to guide Persephone back from the underworld when she must return to her husband for the winter, using her torches and, and her dogs as protection. By the 5th century, Hecate had become strongly associated with the ghosts and the souls of the dead, possibly due to her joining with the Thalassian god Enodia, who traveled the earth with a retinue of ghosts and was depicted on coins as wearing a leafy crown and holding torches, which was strongly associated with Hecate. Eventually, the two gods were joined into one. By the first century, Hecate's chthonic and nocturnal character had led to her transformation from a simple protector to a full-blown goddess. She became heavily associated with so much more than just protection and the guidance of the dead. She became heavily associated with witchcraft, witches, magic, and sorcery. The witch Erkthu invokes Hecate as, quote, Persephone, who is the third aspect of Hecate, the goddess the witches revere, and describes her as a rotting goddess with a pallid, decaying body who has to wear a mask when she visits the gods in heaven. Again, this is just one portion of Hecate. Like Hecate, the dog is a creature of the threshold, the guardian of doors and portals, and so it is appropriately associated with the frontier between life and death, and with demons and ghosts which move across the frontier, the yawning of Hades was guarded by the monstrous watchdog Cerberus, whose function was to prevent the living from entering the underworld, and Hecate was to prevent the dead from ever leaving it. In the earliest written source mentioning Hecate, Hesiod emphasized that she was an only child the daughter of Perseus, an 
Anisteria, the sister of Leto, who is the mother of Artemis and Apollo, which I'm not sure how she is an only child, but has a sister, grandmother of the three cousins, Phoebe, the ancient Titaness who personified the moon. In later accounts, Hecate was given different parents. She was said in later Greek pantheon writings to be the daughter of Zeus and Asteria instead of Perses and Asteria, the daughter of Aristesis, the son of Pion, according to Pericles, her final and most confirmed parent, however, she was the daughter of Nyx, or Nox, the goddess of night and darkness. As a virgin goddess, she remained unmarried and had no regular consort uh, or spouse. Therefore, or sorry, not therefore, though, some traditions have named her as the mother of Scylla, through either Apollo or Pocis. She is sometimes also stated to be the mother with an unknown father of the goddess Circe, who in later accounts was herself associated with magic, eventually taking over that portion of her mother's worship, while initially simply being a herbalist goddess, similar to how Hecate's association with the underworld and mysteries had her later converted into a deity of witchcraft, which eventually became her main role in the Greek pantheon. In all honesty, I didn't know much about Hecate. She's not a god that I often worship, or worshipped a god that I often researched, and until more recent times when picking up a game that is centered around gods, I had no idea who she was. But in my closing thoughts, she was so multifaceted. There are many myths about her that I would love to go into one day if you would like me to. Uh, but she seemed to be generally benevolent, even though she is the daughter of Nyx and or Nox, who's typically seen as evil and was horribly disfigured, having to wear a mask when she approached the gods of Olympus. She seemed to have many roles and was loved by her people. This was a very fun project for me to look into. There was so much information that I just simply didn't know. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to leave a comment down below with any mythological gods that you would like to see next in the series. And again, you may just see yours next. Thank you again to Crystal Marie for your suggestion and for allowing me to go on this wonderful journey and learning all about this goddess that I barely knew even existed. Thanks, guys.